In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to use the Print and Cut tools in the RIP Manager. Now, the RIP Manager, along with the Vinyl Spooler, they've both been designed to handle either a print and cut job through the one large format printer cutter, or a print and cut job through a separate printer and a separate vinyl cutter. So we've got options to do either way, and I'll go over both of those options in this lesson. So the first thing I'm going to do here is go to page 3, where I've just got a standard um, piece of artwork here, which I've applied a contour cut line around, as you can see here. Now, there's a separate lesson on how to do that, so you should watch that so you know how to do that before even attempting to do printing and cutting, because you'll need to set out a um, contour cut line like this. Now, we want to send this uh, particular artwork to our RIP Manager. So to do that, we come up to this button up here, the RIP button, click on that, and we'll see that our artwork's loaded into the Artwork Manager as we can see it here. Now we need to tell the Artwork Manager we want to print and cut this. So we come up to this uh, button up here, Print and Cut, which you'll see it's down here as well, Print and Cut. And you can see now you've got the artwork with the contour cut line going around it as so. So this is basically ready to send straight to the RIP Manager. I really don't need to use any of these other tools, especially for this lesson, just to show you how to do this. So I click Accept. Now the RIP Manager loads up and the first print job in our uh, list here is this job that we've sent to the RIP Manager. Now again the same thing, we need to come up to here and let the RIP Manager know that we want to print and cut this job. And that's all we really need to do is that. So this job is basically ready to go. We can apply some options like registration marks or crop marks and all these sorts of things. But they're separate options and they're separate lessons on you know these sorts of options if you want to apply them. We've got a large format printer cutter selected, so this is to a print and cut machine, an all-in-one device. And we essentially, all we need to do here is just click, uh, I'll show you, you can either click print or rip only, but if you click rip only, that'll send it to the job queue. And you can see here it's waiting to rip. And I've prepared one earlier because it takes uh, about a minute to rip this job, being so large. So this is exactly a, an exact duplicate of this job up here. And now that I've got this ripped, all I need to do now is simply click print now and my large format printer will print out this uh, artwork here and then it will come back and cut out the contour cut line that I've created. So this is all automated. You really, there's not much for you to do here. Once you've sent it to the, um, to the job queue as you can see here, that's all you really need to do is click print now and um, your machine will do the rest. So that's how you just do a standard uh, type uh, print and cut job like that. Now. If you've got a separate printer and a separate vinyl cutter, I'll go to page two here, and I'll show you the example of how you do it with this type situation. So again, you just click on this uh, rip button up here, loads it in the artwork manager, we click print and cut, or we can do it from here, and we're happy with that, we click accept, loads the rip manager in the first item in the list again, uh, and it's a little bit smaller this time, you can see here, we've got this, uh, this object or this artwork here, and again, we click on this button here, we tell it that we want to print and cut. Now the difference is here, we also want to send this to the spooler, the vinyl spooler, to cut out this blue line, this contour cut line, and we also want to print it as well. Now we can do, we can either send this to the, uh, we can either spool it by clicking the spool cut file here to send it to the vinyl spooler now, but normally what you do is you just simply go ahead and you'd, you'd click uh, print on this, and you'd say print this job, you click yes, move that out the way, you can see we go straight to our job queue, it's immediately printing this, it's a small job, it doesn't take long at all. So that was done in real life, and as you can see, the status has been printed. So this is actually being printed from our machine now on our large format printer. Now what we want to do is come back and cut the contour, the contour cut line. So we go back to pending jobs here, go to our done queue, and you can see here it is here. And now we can press this full cut file button. So as you can see, we've printed this job, and our large format printer has printed it. Come back to our uh, pending jobs queue here, we come to the done uh, folder and we can select this job. That was job 125 that we've just done. And you can see quantity is zero because it's been printed. Now what we do is we see this button comes up, spool cut file, I'll click on that. Ah, see, there are no alignment marks, continue anyway. No, this is an important point. If you want to send it to a separate printer cutter, you need to come down to here and click registration marks. And you can see how it's applied those. If I click it off, you see how they've gone. If I click it on, you see how it's applied registration marks. Now this is an important point that you need to understand. When this has gone and printed on our large format printer, as it's being printed, the media may have stretched a little, it may have printed slightly skew if. There are reasons why we'll need to realign the cut file to suit our actual printout. And I'll explain that now by clicking on Spool Cut File. 
and you'll see that the vinyl spooler loads up and the first item now list is again this job here as you can see I'll just set that to inches and you can see here we've set this onto a Roland GX 60, uh, 640 on COM1 and what we've got here is this cut file that we need to now send to the um, to our vinyl cutter and you can see the spooler automatically detects that this is a contour cutting job uh, and it shows you a, like a, at the image here which ordinary er, sorry ordinarily you wouldn't see in the vinyl spooler you'd only ever see the outline of a uh, or the vectors of a particular job and you'll then see this button appear down here a line cut file now this is what I was talking about before these little registration marks we need to use these to make sure that our contour cut line nicely lines up with our printed artwork that we've got uh, that we've just loaded into the um, the vinyl cutter so you print out your artwork you've loaded into your vinyl cutter you come to this page and you click a line cut file and this little window pops up now this is the manual reposition module now in the manual reposition module we can rotate this around so we can rotate this to match what we actually have loaded into our vinyl cutter so if it's if the artwork looks like this in your vinyl cutter then just rotate it to this position like this like this or like this whatever you actually have so you've got to suit that you've got to match that to suit so you come here you click next okay now most vinyl cutters when you load them up you put your vinyl in you press your pinch rollers down you press a button on the plotter and the head will go left and right and will either end up on the right hand side like this or on the left hand side like this so depending on which side it, it, it goes you can see this uh, uh, hand flashing here you can put on the left hand plotter for, a, for one that sits on the left hand side or right hand plotter for one that sits on the right hand side this is an important distinction you, not, you must set this correctly based on the plotter you have so a lot of Roland plotters it'll sit on the left hand side and some other um, plotters it'll sit on the right hand side depending again on make and model so what we do now is we position using the up and down and left and right arrows on our plotter and we position the blade to this bottom right hand corner registration mark so you put the blade above the crosshairs of the registration mark and you you press uh, reset origin on the plotter so the origin is set to zero zero above the crosshairs of the registration mark important you do that and you check origin is set now some plotters these days you can actually use this automatic detection system so if you have a plotter that allows you to do that and we support it click auto detect another window will pop up and you can follow through those instructions but for the time being we'll assume you don't have an automatic plotter so you put your blader over the crosshairs of the registration marks of the um, of the actual job you have loaded in your machine you go up to the top here you press 00, zero or reset origin so that we now have the origin reset on that corner then we, we click origin is set and we click next now the next thing to do I'll just uncheck metric there is we now need to set the next position so what we do is we use the up and down arrows to, to roll out the vinyl on your machine and you position again the blade above the crosshairs of the registration mark and you type in what's it, what its position is here so by default this should be 25 inches based on this piece of artwork as you can see these two match but as I was saying before when you print out these jobs especially when they're large you'll find the media is stretched a little bit and it may have actually printed slightly skew if now if that happens you'll find that the uh, Y position might be slightly different and you might also have to uh, change the uh, X position as well now you'll see these coordinates on your LCD display of your plotter that's where you'll see this information so once you have the blade over the crosshair of the registration mark in the top right corner for a right hand plotter like this one here then what you do is you type in these coordinates that you read off the LCD display you can click test to make sure that there does a little cross uh, cross cut there and once you're happy you click finished as so and s essentially proceed with cutting if you click yes the machine will spring into life and it will cut that uh, that shape out as you can see here so that's exactly how that works it's quite a simple thing really but you must make sure that you put your blade over the crosshairs of the registration marks and set those settings so I'll click no here I just want to cancel out of this so that's how you do print and cut on a um, separate printer and separate vinyl cutter as I've just shown you there and there's another problem with this as well is what happens when the print and cut job is actually physically larger okay it's larger than our um, 
than what we can actually print or cut onto our devices. And I'll show you that on page 4 here. So you can see here this is rather large, 65 inches by 92 inches. So I'm going to send this, and I'll just quickly run through this so the lesson doesn't go forever. So we go to print and cut as you can see here. I've got this much larger uh, uh, artwork, click accept. Uh, it loads in the RIP Manager like this. And I've gone ahead of myself, sorry, I didn't, <laughs> sorry. In the Artwork Manager what I needed to do was go to Tile to Media here. So we could check Tile to Media, come here like this. Now, uh, there's a lesson on all of this, so I'm not going to go into great detail here. So we're just going to set, we're going to just split this job or this piece of artwork into four separate pieces, as you can see here. But I want to do it equally, so just go equal, equal, and you can see that it's it's splitting this job into four equal quadrants. Um, and I can actually uh, set a tile overlap here of, say, half an inch. So this is going to overlap each other in, in each direction here. So I've got this large piece of print and cut job. I need to go to print cut mode, as so. So I've got this print and uh, cut job here that's far too big for my vinyl cutter and too, far too big for my uh, uh, printer. So I need to s split it off into these separate sections. Again, I reiterate that there is a lesson on how to do all this on its own, which you can come to and watch, which explains it in more detail. But you can quickly, you can quickly see what I've done here. I've just basically applied these tiles here and I've just made them equal. So I end up with my four equal pieces. I click Accept. Now, you'll see I now have uh, tile one of um, one. I need to go to print and cut mode. Tile one of four, sorry, two of four, three of four, and four of four. So I have my four pieces here. And it's exactly the same as I showed you before. You can come here and you can click Rip Only, or you can cl click Print, and that will send it directly to your printer and print this job out. Then what you need to do is take this section to your, um, your vinyl cutter. Now, to make life easier, what you do is you, you click this button here, which adds a border. And you can see it's added this uh, weed border around the edge, but it will cut it perfectly along the edge here so that when you go to cut this, out, this artwork out, you'll end up with a perfect cut line so that you can overlap it on site or in the, on the job itself in the workshop and it'll come out perfectly. Don't forget to add registration marks as so. So we've got registration marks, our crop box here and we can click spool to cut file. But before we would do that naturally we would actually print this and why not? I'll go ahead and do that here for you. Print this job. So it's printing that away. As you can see, it's fairly fast. It's a reasonably large job. It's 47 inches by 34 inches. This just shows you the power of this rip, how quick it is. This is all real time. None of this is contrived. So it's actually printed that job. If I go back to pending jobs, go to done, and I'll see tile one of four here. So that's actually been completed and it's printed. So I've got it out. I've printed that out onto my large format printer and I've now got the piece and I'm going to go and load it into my vinyl cutter. I've done that now. I come to spool cut file. I come here and I can see my uh, my example in the preview here of this, this uh, tile 1 of 4 that I've sent through and what I can do here is I can go align cut file, position it the way I want it as I've shown you in the, the previous job, click next. I might have a left hand plotter in this case. I set my origin so I put my blade over the crosshairs, press 0, 0. I've set my origin, I click next. I, again I come up here, I might work in uh, Imperial. I might have to set these particular uh, measurements here to suit where it actually is with the blade above the crosshair again. I'm happy with all that now. I click finished and I check or click uh, proceed with cutting and as you can see in the preview here my, um, my vinyl cutter springs into life and it comes out and cuts the artwork and I just do that for each tile. For each, this is one of four, two of four, three of four and four of four and that's how I deal with oversize uh, print and cut jobs on a separate printer and separate vinyl cutter. So it's really quite a simple process. Once you've done it a couple of times you'll find it's very easy to do. Uh, the manual reposition modules is easy to use and the steps as I've shown you are quite easy to follow. And that's how you do that, uh, that process and that's the end of this lesson.